Hiya, Robin here. Lovely to see you. Now, do you ever think about this? What would happen and what would exist if you could actually freeze time? I'm sure you've seen movies in which this happens, like this. And all the action goes on around, all the frozen characters. So I've thought about this and I think things like paintings and sculptures would still exist and the beauty of the natural world but it would be weirdly quiet because there'd be no animals moving or birds singing. But there are some things that exist across time. You need time to enjoy them. Things like music, conversations, enjoying a meal, learning, poetry. And so today we're going to enjoy poetry. Now you can read poetry from a page, but it seems to me that poetry is best enjoyed by hearing or seeing performances. Poetry in motion. Let me kick off with a poem. Round and round the garden, like teddy bear, one step, two step, you know it. Do you realise that from the moment we're born, we start hearing poetry? And when I was thinking about this, I realised that actually we use poetry to mark nearly all the big events in our lives. On your birthday, you sing happy birthday, it's a form of poetry. At weddings and funerals, we hear and read poems. At the end of year services in your school, lots of children write and share their poems. And in nearly all uh, faiths around the world, there are prayers and songs that are forms of poetry. So, we're going to hear some poetry today. Now, I've got several special guests for our assembly today. And our first three poems are going to be read by different people. But I guarantee you that you will recognise at least one of these voices because I've asked someone from each of your schools to choose and read a poem for you. So see if you can recognise who it is from your school that is reading these poems and I'll reveal the answers after we've heard them. The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh lovely pussy, oh pussy my love, what a beautiful pussy you are. You are, you are, what a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh let us be married, too long we have tarried, but what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose. His nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon, and hand in hand on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon, they danced by the light of the moon. The Sound Collector by Roger McGough A stranger called this morning, dressed all in black and grey, put every sound into a bag and carried them away. The whistling of the kettle, the turning of the lock, the purring of the kitten, the ticking of the clock, the popping of the toaster, the crunching of the flakes, when you spread the marmalade, the scraping sound it makes, the hissing of the frying pan, the ticking of the grill, the bubbling of the bathtub as it starts to fill, the drumming of the raindrops on the window pane, when you do the washing up, the gurgle of the drain, the crying of the baby, the squeaking of the chair, the swishing of the curtain, the creaking of the stair. A stranger called this morning, he didn't leave his name, left us only silence, life will never be the same. High above the roofs of Paris lives the tomcat of Notre Dame, looking down at the passers-by, ready to save them from harm. The river Seine below him, he watches the boats go by, or set to swing to the rescue in the twinkling of an eye. Catching a baby pigeon or a puppy from under a bus, saving a drowning kitten, 
never making a fuss. The bells have made him slightly deaf, but he'll never miss a call, swinging down a bell rope, clambering down a wall. Amid the wheels and pulleys and the thunderous sounds of bells, lonely amongst the gargoyles, he'll sometime pull faces as well. The lovely Esmeralda is the apple of his eye, green-eyed, black and slinky, he sees her with a sigh. She's the belle of the flower market, the toast of gay Paris, or the young Tom's serenader. How could she love someone like me? She should have a cosy home with a cream and welcome mat, not a corner of a tower alone with a poor cathedral cat. Then one summer evening, perched upon the top of her spire, listening to the organ and the singing of the choir, he heard a sound from far below, a muffled meow for help. He sprang from peak to pinnacle, not caring if he fell. From a darkened doorway there came a scuffling sound. Two rough cats were struggling with a figure on the ground. Down on the rope he swung, sending the villains flying. Through the dusk he swarmed back up, his trembling burden crying. Behind a flying buttress he laid it on the floor. Two green eyes slowly opened. She gently took his paw. My hero, if you want me, I'll stay and share your life. Up here above the rooftops, I'll be your loving wife. Now they're together, poor in poor, she'll never come to harm. The lovely Esmeralda and the Tomcat of Notre Dame. High above the roofs of Paris live the Tomcat and his Madame, as the sun sets over the River Seine and the towers of Notre Dame. How did you get on? Did you recognise your head teacher? Now our last guest is Harry Baker. Now his job is being a poet. That's what he gets to do all day, every day. How amazing is that? Harry was the youngest ever Poetry World Slam champion in 2012. And nowadays you can even hear him on BBC Radio 2. I saw him perform on a Sky TV comedy show. And just last night, he was on BBC Radio 5. So I got in contact with Harry and he recommended the poem that I'm about to share with you as a good one for primary school children. And he's given me permission to put it in this video for your assembly. So it's like having a special guest poet. So this poem is called Dinosaur Love. Um, thank you very much. And yeah, as I got more into poetry, um, you know, I decided I wanted to be accepted as a, as a proper poet. And so to do that, I needed to write a love poem. Uh, but I wanted it to be cool, and so I put dinosaurs in it. Uh, so this is called Dinosaur Love. I want to say I love you, but it seems it's not enough. Because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff, like I'll always have your back, or I'm glad I'm not alone. Or to be honest, I'd say anything so you'll hang up the phone because I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. And these Doctor Who box sets ain't gonna watch himself. I want to say I love you, but it seems it's not enough because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff. And all I'm really trying to say is. I want to love you like a T Rex <laughs> with a tiny brain but a massive heart. And if I was a T-Rex, I would hold you in my T-Rex arms for you from harm because that's dinosaur love. <laughs> it's the way that you send spines down my spine like a stegosaurus or hide just like dinosaurs. No one cares what came before us because I got that love so big it cannot be ignored. Like if you're with a dinosaur, everything else seems secondary. Dinosaurs are not mythical creatures. They are legendary plus just really cool. The thing with dinosaurs is dinosaurs are kind of awesome, more like they actually existed. Yes, my love is real. I ain't talking blindly walking strings attached like Theseus. That's minotaur love. <laughs> when this is dinosaur love, this ain't no damsel in distress, trap princess, dragon slaying quest. Because one, dragons never happen. Two, most women don't need rescuing. Feminist dinosaurs. <laughs> this is less 
prancing unicorns, more two-ton triceratops, or terrifying pterodactyls tearing terror from above, it's dinosaur love. Morton rocking meteorite, trust me, oh, I got a love so old school, it's prehistoric. So if you're into Spielberg, or hip hop with a classic vibe, then we could watch Jurassic Park or listen to Jurassic Five. And if you like a bone, then I know a place where we could see them. I'm a lifetime member of the Natural History Museum. <laughs> I want to say I love you, but that might be awkward. So instead, I'm happy to let that state in my head where it cannot go wrong. And if as time goes on, my dino love dies out as you'd expect when it's extinct, I'd rather that we remain friends and became exes. But if somehow, against the odds, my dino love proves so colossal that it stands the test of time perfectly preserved like a fossil then one day. And you've been left in ruins and need someone to help excavate through it and take an archaeological expert to put you towards me. And at that point I point out, you're like a Brachiosaurus. Because there's no one above you. And I'll be able to look you in the eyes and say, Thank you very much. If you enjoyed Harry's poem, then in the description below this video, there are some links to some of his other works and his website. It includes a link to the poem you've just heard, Dinosaur Love, so you can watch it again with the subtitles on to make sure you can enjoy every word and I do recommend that for older children and adults, his poem, Paper People, is just amazing and worth a listen. So why have I done an assembly on poetry? Well, did you know that 30% of the whole Bible is poetry? So nearly one in three of all the pages, remember it's a library, not a book, is poetry. And to me, as a Christian, that suggests that God must really like poetry and uses it as a way to communicate with us. Now here's just one poem from the Bible, maybe the most famous. It's a version of Psalm 23. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. For his name's sake. Even though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I fear no evil. I fear no evil. For you are with me. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in a house of the Lord and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now our song today is a reimagined version of an old nursery rhyme, Monday's Child. I bet you know the one. Monday's Child is fair of face. Tuesday's Child is full of grace. Wednesday's Child is full of woe, and so on. Now this is a type of fortune telling nursery rhyme and it's been around for at least 500 years. It was supposed to tell a child's character or future based on his or her day of birth 
and also to help young children remember the seven days of the week. Anyway, our song is written by two artists that I enjoy, Randy Stonehill and Phil Keegy, and so I hope you enjoy it too. Monday's child was feeling blue Tuesday's child who noticed you Wednesday's child is full of woe Thursday's child is dressed up with no place to go Friday's child and Saturday out there running wild Since she's met the king of Sunday's child, oh yeah, Sunday's child, oh yeah. Some may cry all through the night, a few send up a wishing kite. Day comes to an end, there you sit all alone, feeling empty again. Frightened by each Saturday, so long since you smiled, you will find no peace of mind until your Sunday's child, Sunday's child. Oh, yeah, Sunday's child. day of the week, every month of the year, while time is still on her side, take the love that is here, every day of the week, every month of the year, while time is still on your side, take the love that is here. Wednesday's child is full of woe Thursday's child is dressed up with no place to go Friday's child and Saturday Out there running wild Since she's met the king of hearts They call her Sunday's child Sunday's child Oh yeah Sunday's child Sunday's child, Sunday's child, oh yeah, Sunday's child, oh yeah. For our prayer and reflection time, we're going to enjoy playing around with poetry. I like to think it's fun to make God smile sometimes. So the first thing I invite you to do is to create some lines of poetry with a head and a tail. Look at my example I'm about to show you. Now mine are in a form of a thank you prayer, but yours could just be a line of poetry if you don't want to actually pray. Now what we do is move the tails down one. The easiest way to do this is to cut down the centre of your paper and then you can shove the tails down and then read the poem again. Here's my example.
So I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.